Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wamplay here to walk you through how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form through Wamplay's Fast Link to hopefully make things a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started. First, you're going to end up on a page that looks just like this at wamplay.com forward slash PPP. It's going to ask you what describes you and your business best. First, my business has multiple employees. Or second, my business does not have multiple employees and or I work for myself. In order to use Fastlane, you do have to ha uh, you do have to be a non-employer business, such as a sole proprietor, a 1099 contract worker, etc. So once I've selected my business does not have multiple employees, we're going to go ahead and click Next. Then it's going to take you to a page that looks like mine, where it's going to ask for some very basic information, such as your first name, last name, email address, mobile phone number, zip code, and whether or not you would prefer Spanish support when going through your application, or if you'd prefer a Spanish application itself. After you filled out all of this application information to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Start My Application. It's going to ask you a couple of things. First, it's going to ask, is PPP Fastlane right for you? And you have to check all that apply for you. First, I have a US mobile phone number. Yes. Second, I know my social security number. Yes. Third, I have a U.S. bank account that I can access online. Yes. Fourth, I file an IRS 1040, including at least a Schedule C, a Schedule C or Schedule F in 2019 or 2020. Yes. I have, an, I have access to a complete PDF of my tax filings from 2019 and or 2020. Yes. Once I filled in all of this information, that means I can apply fast and click this bright blue button. If, however, this is not applicable to you, go ahead and click apply without fast lane and it'll route you to somebody else. In our case, we're going to click apply fast. Then it says we emailed you a verification link. Please check your email and click on the link to continue your application. Keep this window open so you can get support during your application. What this is going to do is it's going to send a super quick email directly to you at the email that you have on file with a secure link to get into your application. Once you click on that link, it's going to take you to a page that looks like mine where it says your email has been verified. To return this to this application later, click on the same link in the email you just received and then press next. And go ahead and enter in your text verification code and hit next. After you click next on the previous page, you'll go ahead and click next right here where it says phone number verified. You can now use this number to access your PPP application. Now it's going to say what to expect. First, basic info. Second, certify key facts. Third, demographics. Four, connect your bank. Five, upload tax documents. Six, select your stimulus. And then seven, sign. Let's click next and get started. First, it's going to ask you for your basic information. So your first name last name, address, city, zip code, and state. Go ahead and scroll down. Find your state. If you do need help, go ahead and click need help. Otherwise, click submit. After that, this information saved. That's going to ask you for your tax information. First, you're going to enter in your social. As always, any and all information I put directly into these applications is 100% falsified for the sake of this application. Date of birth. Date the business was established. And then a DBA or trade name. And then it says, why do you need this? If you do have questions about why you need this, all you have to do is click on this bright blue hyperlink. Otherwise, go ahead and click Submit. After that, again, it says Information Saved. We have a bright green check bar next to Basic Information. That way, we can continue through the system. Then, we're going to move on to Certify Key Facts. We're going to click Next. And it says, I certify under penalty of perjury that the answer to each of these questions is no. Is the applicant or the owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, Voluntarily excluded from the participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency or presently involved in bankruptcy. Next, has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency other than a federal student loan made or guaranteed through a, a program administered by the Department of Education that is A. Currently delinquent, B. Defaulted in the last seven years and caused a loss to the government? Next, 
is the applicant of an individual or any owner of the applicant presently incarcerated or for any felony presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or by other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction. Next, within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or a false statement in a loan application, or an application for federal financial assistance, has the applicant of an individual or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nulla contendere, or commenced any form of parole, including probation before judgment? Is the applicant a franchise, and is the franchise listed in the SBA's franchise directory? You can say no to all of these particular questions under penalty of perjury. Go ahead and click confirm. If not, please, I cannot confirm the answer to each question is no. Next, I certify under, under penalty of perjury that the answer to this question is yes. Is the United States the principal place of residence for the owners of the applicant and all employees included in the applicant's payroll calculation? You simply press confirm. If you cannot confirm the answer is yes, go ahead and click I cannot confirm the answer is yes. Did the applicant receive an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, IDA loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd of 2020? If you received an IDA advance, you should answer no. Very few businesses received an IDA loan during this time. Go ahead and click no. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with, including a management agreement, any other, other business? Go ahead and click now. Again, we clicked that little green check mark next to certify key facts to show us exactly where we are in the process. Next, we're going to move on to demographics. Simply clicking next. Do you want to provide demographic information to the government? You can click yes, provide demographic information, or skip. In our case, we're going to go ahead and skip. Next, you can see we have a check next to basic info, check next to certify key facts, check next to demographics. Let's move on to connect your bank. What this is going to say is you're going to choose a bank account where you'd like the PPP stimulus to be deposited. The bank account must belong to you and or your business. They need that bank to deposit your PPP stimulus, instantly verify your account, or confirm that you qualify for the PPP. Go ahead and press connect. What we do from here is we have you actually connect via plaid. So all you simply do is press uh, continue, find your link directly from the drop down at here, and log in using your online banking credentials. Once you've gone ahead and you successfully connected your bank account with plaid, it'll say this success. Your account has been successfully linked to Womply. You'll simply press continue. After that, it's going to say select your checking or savings account. This is where you'd like your money from the PPP stimulus to be deposited. In my case, where it says be responsible, that's my checking account. We're going to go ahead and click that and click select account. Click submit. And again, we can see exactly where we are in our process. We have three more steps left because basic information, certify key facts, connect your bank are all checked. Let's go on to upload tax docs. Let's click next. It says click check the status of your tax documents. The government requires that you provide these documents in order to apply for a PPP. You must follow the instructions carefully, otherwise your application will not be processed. Let's go ahead and click next. You will need the following. Your IRS 1040 Schedule C and or Schedule F. You will need this to be either filed with the IRS for the 2019 tax year or the 2020 tax year and it must be in a PDF. Let's go ahead and click next. Identifying the right tax documents. Go ahead. If you want to see an example of a Schedule E or see a, an example of a Schedule F, you can click on these right here. They are usually attached to a 1040 filing. It has to be a Schedule C or a Schedule F. We cannot accept anything outside of that in the fast lane. If you do have any kind of other schedule, for instance, an E or an SE or an EF, any of those, you do have to go through the normal lane. However, if it is a Schedule C or Schedule F, simply click Next. And then it says double check before uploading. Do include all pages of your 1040 Schedule C and or Schedule F. Do provide complete forms of your 2019 and or 2020. Do not upload tax documents other than the ones requested. Again, we'll click Next. 
then it says upload your filed IRS docs. You're going to upload that Schedule C and or Schedule F. If you have multiple Schedule Cs or multiple Schedule Fs, you may include those as well. The file format must be a PDF. If you're scanning the document, ensure the image quality is readable and before uploading, you may upload multiple files at a time. Go ahead and click Upload and then find it on your computer. Once you've gone ahead and you've successfully uploaded that, it'll say successfully uploaded your document up here at the top, and then it says upload successful. Important, if you did not include the correct tax documents, your application will be delayed. Once you verify that you've entered everything into the best of your ability, click next. Otherwise, you can go back right here to the previous step and upload additional information. I'm going to click next. Then it's going to say, did you provide one or more 2020 Schedule C's? In my case, I'm going to click yes. What was the info on your Schedule C? And this is specifically going to be right here. What information is on your Schedule C? This will be on line 7 from each form and entered in above. If you did upload more than one Schedule C, take the sum of line 7 from every form and enter it. And then press Next. Now it says 2020 Schedule C information saved. Did you provide one or more 2020 Schedule Fs? If you did not, go ahead and click No. If you did, go ahead and click Yes, and that'll give you that information, and you'll enter in the info as requested, just like on the previous page. I'm going to go ahead and click No. Then it's going to say, did you provide one or more Schedule uh, 2019 Schedule Cs? In my case, I only did a 2020 Schedule C, so all I have to do is click No. And then again, did you provide one or more 2019 Schedule Fs? Again, we did not have a Schedule F. We only uploaded a 2020 Schedule C. Then it says, what best describes you? Self-employed, independent contractor, or sole proprietor? Please pick the label that's most applicable to you in your particular situation. In my case, I'm going to click independent contractor or 1099 worker and press next. Then it says, what best describes your business or the work that you do. In my case, this works a lot like a NAICS code, so we're going to enter in the best. Uh, we're going to enter in a general description of our information to the best of our ability. Right here, if I enter professional, it says all professional scientific and technical services. We'll go ahead and click that and click next. Now, as you can see, we have our basic information checked, certify key facts checked, demographics checked, connect your bank check, upload tax doc check. Next, it's going to ask us to select our PPP stimulus. We're going to go ahead and press next. From here, it says, have you received a PPP loan before? Yes or no. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click no. However, if you have had a PPP loan before, you will need to click yes. Then it says you appear to be eligible for X amount. And it shows you the amounts for both your first draw and your second draw. If you have not received the first round of the Paycheck Protection Program previous to this point in time, how it works with Fastlane and why it's cool and beneficial is we help you to be able to apply for both for your first round and second round simultaneously if you have not received a PPP stimulus up to this point in time. In this particular case, it says I appear to be eligible for X amount, shows me my first draw and second draw. I can choose. Do I want to apply for both amounts at the same time? Or do I want to apply for one amount only? So it would be only my first draw. In my case, I'm going to click first draw. We're going to click the max amount and we're going to click next. After that, it says final review. Review your application before submission. First name, last name, email address, phone number. Did you already receive a PPP? Yes or no? Your address, city, state, zip code, social security number, date of birth, date the business was established, DBA, says what best describes you, what best describes what your business does or the sort of work you do, your first PPP amount and your second PPP amount and your total. Then you'll simply click next. Then it says important, first and second draw loans. You chose to receive either a first and second draw PPP with the same lender. Each loan requires a signed application and signed promissory note before it can be funded by your lender. You can sign your first draw loan application as soon as it's ready, typically within 24 hours. However, keep in mind, we are dealing with thousands of applications on a daily basis. It may take a little bit of additional time for it to be able to go underneath that initial review. Once approved, you will sign your first draw uh, promissory note. Then, your funds will be dispersed into your bank account. 
Immediately after your first draw loan is funded, we will email you a link to sign your second draw loan application and repeat the process above. Each loan will arrive in your bank account as a separate deposit and we will notify you after the money has been sent. Once you understand this, you read through this, you simply click I understand. And it says PPP Fast Lane Overview. First, sign your first draw application. Second, after the first draw has been approved by the SBA, you'll find, sign your first draw promissory note. Third, you'll receive your first draw funding. After you've received your funding and after you spend that funding, you'll see sign your second draw application. Then, after the second draw has been approved by the SBA, you'll sign your second promissory note. And six, receive second draw funding. This is going to be your steps from here. You simply click next. Then, there's a quick le legal disclaimer, and we're going to go through it together. Wampley PPP Fastlane collects the minimum information needed to create your official application. This accelerated data collection flow is not a substitute for reading the legal documents you will need to sign. Wampley is not a PPP lender and is not engaged in making loans or extending credit to consumers or businesses. Additionally, Wampley is not in the business of providing legal or tax advice. Instead, Wampley is an agent to various PPP lenders, and these lenders compensate Wampley for providing you with this PPP application portal and for providing them with other services. Wampley is not a party to your loan. You are solely responsible for the quality, accuracy, and completeness of any information you submit in relation to your PPP. Wampley populates your loan application with the information you have provided to Wampley. Prior to signing your application, you must review it for completeness and accuracy. Wampley is not responsible for ensuring that your submissions comply with applicable laws, rules, and or regulations. Wampley makes no representations regarding your eligibility or ineligibility for a PPP. And finally, Wampley does not guarantee that a lender will approve your application. Once you've read that full legal disclaimer, go ahead and click complete my application. Then it says, are you sure you're done with your application? Once you submit your application, you'll no longer be able to make changes. You simply click yes, submit my application. After that, it says, congratulations, we received your information. We're going to review your application in the next 24 hours. Again, please bear with us. We're going through a ridiculous amount of applications at this time. We're going as fast as we possibly can. It may take a couple of extra days. If the information you provided looks good, we'll email you so that you can review, initial, and sign off your official PPP application so it can be sent to the SBA. If we have questions about your application or there's an issue, we'll email you directly. To get back into your application, you can click the link in the email we already sent to you. Click Next. And then it says up to 41 million American workers and businesses may qualify for the PPP, whether they have a business with employees or are self-employed or just get a 1099 MISC, they could receive up to this amount. Go ahead and click. After that, it tells you your current application status. In my particular case, it says requested. And if for any reason you, need, uh, you are contacted to upload your files, update your bank details, or if you need to have the FAQ, you can simply check out this page right here. What's going to happen from here is your application is going to go underneath an initial review. It does take a couple of days to complete. After that initial review has been completed, we reach out to you directly via email for additional correspondence, whether that's that we need additional information, such as to upload files or bank details, or we send you DocuSign information to sign your loan so it can be submitted to the SBA. If you do run into any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always reach out to us. However, let's go over how to be able to check your application status on your own. To check your application status, simply navigate to wampley.com forward slash ppp. On this particular page, you'll re recognize this. We filled this out at the very beginning of your application. Down here at the bottom, it says already have an application through PPP Fastlane. Log in here. Go ahead and click the login button. It's going to ask you to enter in the mobile phone number you verified when you started your PPP application. Let's enter that in together and click send code. After that, it takes a couple of seconds and then it's going to send you a verification code. You're going to go ahead and enter that directly into the system as shown and click next. It says phone number has been verified. You can use this phone to access PPP Fastlane later and click next. Then it's going to take you into a page that looks just like this where it says PPP application status is requested. You can upload files, bank details, and an FAQ. If you do run into any additional questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to always reach out to us. Thanks so much!